Hi, it's Florina Cezani, clinical psychologist, and we're speaking mental health and focus today is on grief. Grief is different from depression, but uh, most of the time the symptoms may seem similar, but it's a natural process where now you've lost the loved one and grief is unique for people because we grieve differently. No two people grieve the same and sometimes it is also informed by even the cultural beliefs of individuals. So that is why now we say that now it's a unique process, though it might be similar to depression, but it's not depression. There's intense sadness, there's social withdrawal, and you might think that you are depressed. Remember, you are reacting to what has happened to you, to your loved ones. And you'll find that also you, your usual activities, you're no longer doing them. There's also forgetfulness. And sometimes, especially when it's traumatic uh, uh, death, you know, of a loved one, there's a lot of forgetfulness. You cannot sleep properly also. There's poor concentration. And it's because you are grieving. You are sad. And most of the time, it's a very painful feeling. And it comes in waves. And the important thing is to ride the wave because it's grief. You need to go through the process. Though it is painful, but for you to be able to resolve that grief at the end, you need to, to, to deal with those emotions. Just ride those emotions like a wave because it comes and goes. There are those times that now sometimes we'll have the like positive emotions, remembering your loved ones, you feeling good, you can function, and other days you are down there. That is why now we'll say that now it's like a wave you just need to, to 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 ride it and it's different from depression in the sense that with depression you'll find that it also impact on like depression will impact on your self-esteem issues but with grief you are in pain but you're still maintaining your self-esteem because sometimes with depression you'll feel like there are those feelings of a worthlessness but with grief you steal yourself you can still function on other days other people can take many many days without functioning there are those when it gets too severe they cannot deal with it they get hospitalized especially when it's trauma and then now it kind of like paralyzes them now where they like they cannot function and Unresolved grief can bring depression. Remember, the cure of grief is to grieve. Because sometimes it's like you're sweeping it under the carpet. Sometimes people around you, they are expecting you to be okay. But the reality is that you are not okay. You need to go through it. And it's okay to cry. It's normal to cry because other people will feel bad and even according to our cultural beliefs it will be like you do not have to cry and also sometimes when it comes to to men the males where now it will be like eh, men don't cry tigers don't cry but tigers do crack so it's very important that now they are also in tune with their emotions because the more it gets unresolved you go through that now for years and years and then now it turns into depression only to find out that now when we probing deeper it, you find that now it is grief that now you never uh, dealt with and when grief coexists with depression then it becomes it gets complicated because now grief gets severe and you grieve for longer that is why a uh, if maybe you come to me as a psychologist, I also want to know your, 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 your emotional well-being before grief, before you lost your, your loved ones. 
your mental status and your mood before that and you'll find that maybe this is a person who's prone to anxiety prone to depression and you'll find that now even anxiety levels now they are high and those are people sometimes we also put them on medication but others we we don't because the important thing is that now we just need to facilitate your process because you need to to grieve and human beings are diverse as i've said we do not grieve the same way and we need to respect one another because we do not have to impose on you how you need to grieve and when you need to grieve what i do now i'll facilitate the process and even i have to understand uh, maybe from your cultural background that now what is it that you 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 doing when you in mourning or when you are grieving and did you maybe follow the necessary rituals and other people it get unresolved if maybe they were not even involved in the process and then now there's also those feelings of anger that now i was never involved in the process so it's very important sometimes when you've lost the beloved ones that now it's like involve maybe other people in the family and sometimes we also forget about children that children do grieve but they grieve in their own way because their children they are not verbally expressive like us adults where you are going to say i'm feeling like this and that but sometimes they, they, they kind of like act out in terms of their behavior. Others get angry, they fighting at school, others are withdrawn, others they are no longer performing very well academically. And especially for children, children also heal through playing. Involve them in those extramural activities, even at home. And sometimes it's also very important to grieve together. Don't be shy maybe to talk about uh, the, 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 the person who has passed on that maybe today I'm not feeling good because sometimes children will feel that now is a taboo to talk about this person and that is why sometimes now they go through life uh, with unresolved grief or sometimes we don't even have to see the, the, the pictures of, of the departed person. We're hiding them. And then children will think that now this is a no-go area. And sometimes now it impacts negatively on their uh, emotional well-being. It impacts negatively on their mental health. So that is why now it's very important that now uh, you resolve your grief you work through it because it's a process it's not an event because a funeral is an event people come there are a lot of people who are coming to come and grieve with you it's an event but after that now you're entering the phase of of grief that process now where now is very painful sometimes you might even feel that now People do not understand what you're going through. And there are people who might even avoid you. It's because sometimes they do not know what to say to you. So it's also very important to, to reach out to people who are grieving. And especially now, in the midst of, uh, uh, of COVID-19, when now people are losing their, uh, their lives, and it's very difficult for the families because now it becomes complicated grief in the sense that now it's no longer like in some communities it's like it's a collective it's collective grief people attend and you heal when other people are coming coming to help you but now the challenge now of covid 19 you you find yourself that you you, you find yourself that now you are alone and not many people came to the funeral because now uh, the virus must not spread. And we'll find that now as time goes on with other people, it complicates their grief because even other members couldn't even attend the funeral. And there are those who view the body in their belief where it creates closure. But now 
things are different you not view the body the body is wrapped and at the same time it's also creating anxiety because you you you're scared that now i might even contract the virus in the process and i i i, I need to kind of like uh, deal with this in a certain way then the process sometimes doesn't come naturally because you 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 do not reach closure so that is why now is very important that maybe after when the pandemic now that now it has subsided it's manageable that maybe go to your ritual as a family things that you used to do that now for us to remember so and so this is what we need to do others they go to the grave maybe because now of covid you couldn't go to the grave but when now the time is right visit that if maybe that is what you believe in or maybe create whatever ritual because now it might complicate the process and prolong grief and sometimes it gets complicated especially when a person has got like kind of like that failure to undo attachment that binds the mourner and the bereaved one sometimes maybe you are very close to the person and it's very difficult now to kind of like moved on you are too attached to that person and then grief gets prolonged as i said that now we, we grieve differently and it's not our duty to judge our duty is to to support the person sometimes you do not you don't even have to say anything just sitting there listen to the person talking because sometimes through talking we might even end up saying wrong things we might even end up saying judgmental statements even just making a cup of tea for a person who's grieving it means a lot that i'm here with you sometimes you, you you're sitting silently next to the person but in a way you're saying i'm here with you sometimes you're doing shopping for the person you're helping maybe with cleaning of the house because the person uh, cannot function optimally especially now when the the, the, the like uh, the funeral maybe was recent it's a process and as i said is a wave there are those uh, times that now you feel down you back there and don't feel guilty sometimes other people they'll go through denial that now the person has not passed on is a normal face as long as you are able to move from there you're not staying there for a very long time because sometimes that denial it can even help you to run the funeral that now where you are doing this and this as if now there's nothing there are those maybe we are hating more and others is shock at that particular moment they are not even crying it's because of shock and we tend to judge them that now why is so and so not crying we grieve differently and we go through the faces uh, differently others may even move to anger in the process where sometimes maybe you might be angry at god or you angry at whatever you believe in you angry at your ancestors you angry at allah whatever your religion is that now you can feel angry sometimes you angry at yourself where you are feeling guilty you are in a cycle of maybe i should have done this maybe i didn't do this so and so would have been alive and there are those people who can even get stuck on that and that prolonged guilt also might result to depression in the end because now there's self-blame others they can also be what we call an existential crisis where sometimes you kind of like you you lose faith if maybe you believe in god and then you like god is not there god does not like me why did god do this it means there's no god so don't judge the person it is a phase that is what the person is going through just support the person because that is where he or she is and it's not like a systematic way of grieving other people can move from this stage to that one it is kind of like that a flexible stage not that now you move from this as i said people mourn differently people grieve differently and when it's unresolved as i said 
then it might lead to 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 depression and that is where now others get put on medication or they come you also come for grief counseling if it gets too much like now i am not coping anymore and there are those who are able to resolve grief on their own where as time goes on they go to acceptance phase it's quite a journey also to get there it might take a year it might take years where you still cannot believe that now your beloved one has departed and when a person now has gone through that acceptance phase is then you'll see now there's that change again now in behavior where the person now is kind of like back to herself because grief changes you pain changes you so as time goes on others now will be accepting of that that now the person is no longer there and you carrying the person now in your heart because it's a pain that you learn to live with it's not an easy it's not an easy process you go through those emotions and i'm also here even speaking from my personal experiences a year that i've buried my mother it was quite a journey and i was even saying to my kids that yo i didn't know that i've got so many tears because i'm a human being i've got feelings i was grieving for my mother even now i'm still grieving but now life goes on where i'm now at this kind of like acceptance phase that now she is uh, no more and sometimes it gets uh, complicated when you maybe you have that inability maybe to to adapt sometimes you have to take the role of the deceased the person who was doing this and that it's you now that you have to do that others are unable to do that that is where sometimes now they come to the psychologist we help them now to process that others are emotionally stuck they are on like one face of grief and this what we also call disenfranchised grief it's kind of like compartmentalized it's kind of like when we say now is this infant disenfranchised uh, grief it's like it's grief that is not acknowledged by the society or maybe people not acknowledging your grief let's say maybe let me give a scenario here let's say maybe it's an an extramarital affair that now this person is married but that was your boyfriend or your girlfriend and then now you're not supposed to grieve because now it will be like you grieving for somebody's husband you grieving for somebody's a uh, uh, wife or maybe you grieving for somebody's girlfriend or boyfriend and then it gets disenfranchised and you're not able to grieve because now it has judgment where now there's judgment on the society or maybe other people it's like maybe is a polygamous marriage it's more than one wife and then you'll find that now there's that one who is supposed to kind of like lead the process you need to grieve a particular way and we are unique you also want to grieve but it's kind of like it's dictated to you how do i grieve and that's why now it gets disenfranchised and sometimes it may not even be noticed by people around you and they won't even understand why are you grieving and even for kids sometimes it get disenfranchised because we kind of like exclude them in the grieving process instead of roping them in and sometimes there's even loss of a place in the process that now the person who has passed on was a, a a breadwinner now i cannot grieve i need to postpone these emotions i need to find a place sometimes there's loss of a job i'm not working in the process and now i'm focusing on this then it delays uh, the the grieving process so that is why now it's very important that now we need to understand where people are and as i've said it's also not our duty to judge it's our duty is to support the person because they need to restore is a process they feel that now is the end of the world 
but now we have to give them hope and at the same time we do not have to be moralizing them because sometimes we'll say that now it's been a very long time get over it how long have you been grieving now or sometimes it's an elderly person and then now people uh, impose their values on you that now but the person was old the fact remains that was my own i am grieving it's my grandmother is my grandfather is my elderly mother and sometimes the people will say at least he or she raised you i know that she raised me i do not have to be told by somebody else but you just need to help me walk through the journey because sometimes as you're grieving you're feeling lonely and you are vulnerable at that particular moment you're highly sensitive you feel like people have a uh, 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 are not a uh, 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 like uh, helping you through the process so that is why it's very important even that message that call that hey how are you doing and i also love the grief a uh, process the, the grief process model of grief where sometimes now it kinds of like create a balance that now you grieving at the same time is a dual process you grieving and there are times where you need to restore where you also need to function like where they in that loss orientated side that now i've lost somebody it means what i'm doing i am doing grief work meaning that now is a dynamic process where now there's oscillation where i'm moving from a grief work and i go to restoration that now in my grief i can still go to work after some time and i can still laugh it does not mean that now i do not remember the person who has passed on my beloved one but where now i can still do other things attending to some uh, to to life changes because now there are things that have changed things now i have to do them differently and sometimes you find yourself again back there intrusion of grief those intrusive thoughts it comes back again and sometimes when we don't understand we like but she was fine i saw her laughing that is a process is a dual process because sometimes it's very difficult to break the bond with the departed soul depending on your relationship with that particular person other people can even relocate that maybe is bringing painful memories others can even be avoidant of the situation there are those other uh, others can even take a long time not even attending funerals and even at the same time we just need to empathize just give them that opportunity to, to to grieve because we don't grieve the same way because the other person might say i got over it why can't he or she get over it but the fact remains that now we're not the same and when i oscillate now going to the other restorative process it means that now i can even do new things i can see things differently i can even find my distraction to my grave it does not mean that i'm grieving i'm not I, i'm not grieving at that particular moment but it's a constructive dis distraction that now life goes on there are new roles now sometimes even identities i have to form new relationships because sometimes it's very it's very difficult that now where do i start how do i move on i used to do things with so and so but now it's very difficult and for people maybe who are also using alcohol it's also very important uh, during that moment to guide them because sometimes as a self-medicating process for them they might say it's better if i drink i can sleep better i can i can forget but sometimes alcohol is also a depressant on itself that is why now it triggers other emotions when a person is intoxicated you start crying you start remembering that person and it delays the process others are abusing substances then it's very important and even in our religions in our maybe in our churches our spiritualities not to judge them because 
Sometimes we'll say, you're crying like a heathen. Just because I'm crying, I'm not a heathen. I am a human being. I'm going through a process because people might say, why does he or she cry like there's no God? But the fact remains that now we need to support them and we need to know that now we have to be there for one another, especially in times like this. We need to be a one another's support system. So social support system is very important in moments like this. Remember also now, uh, we kind of like, it's like you're burying ourselves now because of this challenge of COVID-19. So people might get depressed in the process. People might get lonely in the process. People might get angry because now they are not doing things the way they are used to do them. It's very important that now where we kind of like mobilize that support, rallying around them, even through technology because now there's a pandemic. Let's check on those people. If maybe I need to do something for them over the phone, that now maybe can I go and do this? Because it's very important through this process that now we need to be there for one another because grief is one process that it's, it's, a, it's a personal journey. It's very personal and we experience it differently. So that is why we do not have to judge one another. But the main thing also, again, don't remain in that hole forever. Just try and also restore. Do that self-talk that now I also need to do this. Even if maybe I was crying in the morning, after that I must say, let me go and make myself a cup of tea. Let me go and take a bath. Let me go and do this. In that way now, you are restoring. And remember, that is your process. Own your process. Acknowledge the emotions. Do not deny them. So that now, after some years, because if you are not acknowledging that, it might come back. So take care of yourself whilst you're grieving. And let's also learn to be there for one another. Thank you.